What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint, here with my new comic book day reviews for Wednesday, October 9th, so stay tuned. Alright guys, you know we keep it spoiler free, we're going to just talk about the comics that I pulled and kind of my initial thoughts of them. Uh, as always, shout out to our man Chris at Lost Dog Comics in El Paso, Texas. That's our local comic shop, so make sure to go check them out. So, first up, we're going to talk about the record-breaking Spawn issue 301. I'm not really a variant guy, but I did go ahead and get the ASM 301 cover homage because I'm a sucker for those kind of cover swipe covers. Uh, issue 301, another big issue, oversized with a hard stock cover. Like, I bet you're going to see a lot of 9.9s and, and Gem Mint 10s on these books because of that hard stock cover. But, you know, we find out in issue 300 that really the power wasn't all in the symbiote this whole time. It wasn't all in the costume. Al Simmons, Spawn, he had the power himself uh, this entire time. And he kind of mutilated himself to look like Spawn when Clown took his costume from him. So that's where we pick up in one of these storylines. We basically get to see what happens directly after that. I don't want to spoil it. Th these are always going to be spoiler free. It does also show Al Simmons hitting all the big news stations and kind of dropping the dime like he said he was going to do on the road to 300. And overall, it was just a great issue, man. A lot of dope art by Todd McFarlane uh, with others. Kind of the same... Uh, creative teams as with uh, issue 300 except I don't think Greg Capullo had anything to do with this one but Spawn 301 loved it all right jumping over to the Marvel books we got Doctor Doom number one I saw this uh, being solicited and I, I was pretty excited and it started off pretty strong I, I think uh, we have a good book here we have Humans are trying to cure global warming and all these problems by creating this very small black hole on the dark side of the moon. Sounds like a terrible idea to me. It sounded like a terrible idea to Doom. He tried to stop everyone from doing it, but they kind of just felt like, oh, since you're not a part of it, you think it's a bad idea, whatever, whatever. It looks like it does obviously go bad. We get a appearance from Kang the Conqueror, and we get what kind of looks like Doom seeing two timelines happening at once. A timeline where he is not disfigured and he's married and has kids. And the timeline that he's in, which, like I said, it doesn't really work out too good for us with this black hole idea. We get to see Doom in action and he's actually attacked because it looks like he is the one that caused all the problems. It looks like he launched missiles from Latveria to the space station that was working on this miniature black hole and destroyed them, killing everybody on board. And he's prepared to turn himself in, but it doesn't look like he's the one that's responsible. So we're going to have to keep reading to see what happens with that. But uh, overall, I like Doom Issue 1. All right, Contagion Issue 2. This is a weekly series, and it's really Marvel's answer to Deceased. It's kind of like a zombie story, but it's more like a plague story where you have these kind of like uh, outbreak of some kind of virus and it, it kind of, you know, turns you into a zombie, kind of, or just kind of, like, messed up, kills you. Uh, we get more of Iron Fist here, uh, but now we get some Luke Cage, and we get Cloak and Dagger. I don't know. I'm not really digging it. Like I said, it's just kind of like another zombie book. Absolute Carnage, Miles Morales 3. I'm absolutely done with Absolute Carnage. Everything about this story is just so slow. It's not moving anywhere. It's like the same shit over and over again. Miles Morales has been infected by a symbiote, and he's a null, carnage, doppelganger type of monster. But he can kind of, he still has his mind intact. So he learns how to control it, and it's kind of teasing as to what might happen in order to defeat uh, Carnage and Null. So I guess that's kind of the takeaway here. Clayton Crane cover, though, is very dope. Miles, doppelganger, symbiote. Same thing with Amazing Spider-Man, what is this, issue 30, 31, uh, another Absolute Carnage tie-in, went absolutely nowhere, it kind of feels like the same exact thing that happened in issue 30, Norman Osborn still thinks he's Cletus Cassidy, he's still locked up, a lot of flashbacks with Peter and Spider-Man, and you have that bug creature guy again, and just, I'm ready to be over with. Now, what... <laughs> The solicits get me every time because they're teasing this 2099 event, and I'm definitely all in on that. I'm kind of disappointed that 
Absolute Carnage went so slow. I think the Donny Cage stuff was cool. I just didn't need as many tie-ins. I think that's the problem. And I think now that I've read these last two issues of Amazing Spider-Man, I can quit reading the prior issues and just keep on reading from here. Yo, my man did not put Powers of Ten issue six in my pull list. And something told me to check it when I left there. But I figured, nah, he got everything. So, dang, I didn't read Powers of Ten issue six yet. But honestly, I wasn't really going to be able to talk spoilers anyway, and it's probably there's probably not much I could have said except for, oh, it was good, check it out. So we're going to do a final House of X, Powers of Ten, final thoughts, recap, spoiler video separate from this anyway. So be on the lookout for that. But uh, I can't give you my like initial impressions because I haven't got it yet. I got to go grab it later. All right, so uh, we got an independent title here. This is published by, I don't even know who it's published by. But Dead End Kids, issue 3 came out last week. We picked up issues 1 and 2 from Forbidden Planet Comics when we were in New York City. And this was a great read. Unfortunately, it seems like it's the series is over. I guess it was a three-part series. But it was a, a great story. It took place in the 90s of all these kids that have problems, but they stick together. They have this kind of saying, uh, what is it? It's what we do. Like, come on, man. Of course, you can have my last Oreo. That's what we do. You know what I mean? Kind of like their little click. Uh, kind of, you know, one of them dies, and it's who killed them kind of a thing. And this is the first com comic, I think, in history where they're quoting music, and I know the song. Because <laughs> they're doing 90s stuff. So it had, like, The Offspring. It had, um, what other song? I think they had a Blink-182 song. Yeah. So... Great series. I definitely suggest picking it up. If you guys know more about this than I do, let me know in the comments. Is this ongoing? Or was that just the end of this arc? I don't know. But I'm down for more. Another one that I missed from last week, um, Bloodshot Number 1. It was okay. I mean, it was just a little bit of an action-packed kind of thing. I don't really know where the story went. Uh, but, you know, the artwork was very like reminiscent of like McFarlane Capullo in the 90s. So I really did enjoy the artwork on this. But... Bloodshot's killing people. I mean, what do you want to tell you? But my pick of the week, again, DC Black Label with the magazine format book. This is Joker Harley Criminal Sanity. Now, when I saw this solicited, I, I, I saw that it was, you know, one issue one of a nine issue miniseries. And I thought, really? Another Harley Quinn book? We just had Harleen, which uh, I really liked. And um, now we got another one. And I kind of went into it with low expectations, thinking you're not going to beat Harleen because that was like a dope book, my pick of the week last week. <clears throat> but this book was really good. This uh, focused entirely on Harley Quinn, pre-Harley Quinn days, where she's still a, a therapist. It was written by Cami Garcia, and it had two artists, Miko uh, Suyan and Mike Mayhew. Now, what I found interesting about this is that in present time, everything was black and white. It was by Miko, and everything that was a flashback was the most realistic painting I've ever seen. It looked like it was photographs. Uh, Mike Mayhew killed the artwork on this. It looked like 4K video quality. Like It didn't look like drawings or paintings at all. So it was definitely amazing. And what I told Fee, because she hasn't read this yet, if you want your girl to read comics with you, give her this book. Because if they like serial killer documentaries which all females pretty much do they're gonna like this book because it's kind of like harley helping the police out with these homicides and the killer seems to have a motive and we're thinking it's joker i'm pretty sure it's obvious that it's joker but they talk about like ted bundy they talk about other type of serial killers and their motives and what makes somebody um a psychotic what makes somebody you know smart and meticulous and and somebody who's strategic so I thought it was a really interesting book. It's way thinner than Harleen. It's more of a regular size comic as far as pages. Uh, a little bit cheaper, $6 book. But my pick of the week, man. I'm telling you, it was dope. Lastly, you know, I'm a sucker for True Believers. And I got this uh, AF-15 Fasimal Edition. I just, I'm a sucker for these books. I like to give them away. I don't know why they called this one Uncanny X-Men Pyro. Because really it's just Days of Future Past part one right i mean uncanny 141 or actually x-men 141 and then they changed to uncanny with 142 and the elephant in the room <coughs> i picked up some pops these are the first funko pops i've ever bought let me tell you why i bought them so 
somebody posted in the Gemini's. I think it was my man Brandon Wilson with his wall of pops, which I don't want to do. I don't want to have a whole wall of pops. I don't think I do. I don't want to have that. Uh, so anyway, you know, we our, our group is mad chill, right? They're super cool people. And, you know, some people are like, yeah, I mess with Pops too, or no, that's not my thing, or whatever. And somebody said, yeah, I pre-ordered all the Fantastic Four Pops. So I was like, huh? Fantastic Four Pops. So I searched it up, and there's 10 commons, which includes Galactus, Silver Surfer, Doctor Doom, Mole Man, of course, Fantastic Four. And, yo, I, I'm like, I need to get these Pops. And what makes it interesting for me, and which is, I guess, kind of the lore for Funko Pop collectors, is that there's these Chase Pops. So there's, like, variants that you can only get at Target or uh, Hot Topic or whatever. And I, I know I'm super late. But, um, <clears throat> like, Namor, you'll only be able to get here or there or whatever. So I think I'm going to go ahead and, and go after that. I think it'll be fun for me. It'll be fun for the channel. Add a, another kind of element here. And when I was at the shop today, I saw these. And at first I thought, oh, shit, they must be releasing them because there's Human Torch and there's Namor. But then I looked and I said, oh, wait a minute. Th these are different. These are Marvel 80-year pops. And this is the original Android Human Torch. And this is like Golden Age Submariner. You could even see on the back they have the Marvel Comics number one cover. So I went ahead and just got them they do have the original x-men team coming out in this too so i'm already hooked man i'm already i'm already in. i'm gonna get the x-men team i'll probably try to get as many of the marvel 80 years pops as i can but i think there's like 50 of them i don't, I don't want to get 50 of them. i don't think i don't think i do but anyway that's why i got them here so i don't know i hope i didn't start something crazy like i don't really want to go get old pops but i would be down to get the fantastic four commons get the chase ones and then just see what other kind of lines come out. You know, they do Seinfeld or Bone Thugs and Harmony or something or Wu-Tang. I'm in. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for the new comic book day spoiler-free reviews. Let me know what was your favorite book this Wednesday. I know there's a couple books that I missed, like some Batman's Grave. I might go back and pick that up later. Um, very little to no DC. Yeah, we had just the one DC book here. Like I said, Powers of Ten, Issue 6. We're going to do an entire series spoiler breakdown separate video. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys liked. Make sure to hit that like button and make sure to drop me a comment. Help this video kind of gain some traction and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. We drop daily content. I plan, I have a lot of live shows planned. I'm going to do a show with Very Gary live show talking about his first experience as a dealer at New York Comic Con. And he made a huge move there. I'm going to see if he wants to talk about it, but it's big. Uh, maybe get Dennis on too to talk about his experience there. I have a local artist who is sick. He is like a professional level artist. He, he's a full-time artist and he lives in my area. And what we want to do is get him on, on the show, uh, not live. I'm going to do a pre-recorded thing of him doing this sketch. Uh, he's going to do He's going to do a piece that we're going to give away on the channel. So any ideas or suggestions on how we could give it away, we'll probably just have you comment on that video. But I'm going to try to plan that soon. I'm going to get my man Mr. X on the channel, and I'm going to jump on his channel as well as, as some more statue stuff. And Sideshow Juggernaut ships today, man, so we're going to have an unboxing and a review coming very soon for that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. You guys stay minty fresh. Peace.